Images that are hard to see showing the true power of Mother Nature. Several tornadoes tearing through western Ohio, leaving a path of destruction for miles. Andrew Kinsey is live in Salina, Ohio for us tonight to start out our team coverage. Andrew, what have you seen so far? Christy, cleanup well underway here tonight in Salina, where residents still rattled after a deadly tornado ripped through this community late last night. The damage quite extensive, wet and debris all over the place. Take a look at this pipe. This is from inside the walls of someone's home, simply showing the force of the winds that struck this area. We're in a neighborhood not far from the downtown area. You can see people on the roofs there starting to put tarp on top of homes. You can also hear the chainsaws off of the distance where people are trying to clean up some of the to debris. Uh, the mayor here, Jeff Hazel, describing the damage as a war zone. Homes flattened, roofs stripped away, trees snapped, one car sent airborne into a home. We know that one person was killed in the storm, seven others injured. Just a few hours ago, M Governor Mike DeWine was on the ground here surveying the damage and pledging to help. We just left uh, a couple uh, that had no basement. And uh, they did what they should have done, uh, which is they, they got into the bathtub and uh, the husband jumped on top of the family and, you know, it really saved their life. And when you go into that house, there's nothing that's not been damaged except for that, for that, uh, that bathroom. Now, at this hour, emergency management officials and crews from the National Weather Service still combing the area, trying to determine exactly how large this tornado was. However, they do know it left a trail of damage that spans three to five miles. Tonight, residents crediting, crediting those emergency weather sirens for saving lives. Let's continue our live team coverage now with John Monk. John, you've been on the ground here all evening talking to residents who are in disbelief. That's right, Andrew. We're in one of the hardest hit neighborhoods in all of Salina and the northwest corner of town and as you can see behind me homeowners here have a long road ahead to cleaning up after this tornado pretty much all day long some even before the sun came up neighbors friends and family flocked to this neighborhood on bruns avenue and michael avenue about a block north of fairgrounds road here we saw trees snapped in half roofs torn off of homes and cars covered and pummeled from flying debris at last check there was only one confirmed fatality in this community 81 year old melvin hannah under a dozen or so were also hospitalized. We spoke with two, two homeowners in this neighborhood, a man who says he just barely made it into his basement when the tornado hit this neighborhood, and a local firefighter who was on call during the event and came home to see his neighborhood in tatters minutes after the storm had passed. We basically got set up to go in and then all of a sudden it just started, everything started crashing, the winds were picking up, the air. You could tell the air was really moving and so forth. I mean, it went this way, but if it would have jumped a block that way, you'd have been in apartments with people that don't get around real well, that don't have basements, you know, to go to. I think it might have been a totally different outcome. I know my house is trashed. You look over there, those two are worse than mine. Um, you know, it's just, it's just things work out the way they do sometimes. Yep. Now, coming up at 6, we spoke with officials who are down here assessing the damage, and one of them actually says that many lives here were saved because these residents listened to and acknowledged all of those uh, tornado watches and warnings last night. It's quite heartbreaking, John, to see people's possessions, their memories, their livelihoods now in rubble and debris. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Many of those residents even telling us today that this is not the first tornado to hit here. They say three have hit in the last three years, but they don't come easy at all. The rain starting to fall here in Salina again tonight. Not something helping the uh, cleanup efforts here tonight. Uh, Red Cross now on the scene offering assistance to those who have no place to go. Also offering food and water to those. This not the only area hit last night. Wapakoneta also struck. We'll update you on that coming up tonight at 530. Thank you, Robert. At least one killed after a tornado hit Salina, Ohio. The National Weather Service saying that deadly tornado was at least an EF3, meaning winds could have reached up to 136 to 165 miles per hour. And you can see the destruction it left behind. Those used to be homes and now debris scattered all around. Andrew Kinsey has been on the ground all day getting a firsthand look at the damage. Andrew, cleanup looks like it's going to take some time. 
Uh, some time indeed, Christy. A state of emergency declared here in Mercer County tonight by Governor Mike DeWine due to the extensive damage here in Salina. Uh, the damage quite extensive across the area. We are in a neighborhood outside downtown, and I want you to see this home here to my right here. It appears not to have been touched at all, but if you pan over next to it, you can see a roof stripped off that home. The home next to that, the walls no longer existing. You can see straight into the dining room and pan over just a little bit more. You can see there a barn, a shed appears to be in the tree line there and just over uh, next to that, you can see a roof taken off, now covered in tarp. One person killed here, seven others injured in a late night tornado that spun through this area uh, last night. Uh, the mayor here, Jeff Hazel, describing the damage seen here as a war zone. Rick McCoy, the emergency management director of Van Wharf County, is here on the ground assisting officials here. Here's how he explained the scene. What was very important about Salina here is that the, the warnings were out ahead of time. People were using technology that we have. We have so much of it today with the, the alert systems and the sirens and, and media and uh, the National Weather Service putting out very good information. We knew that a tornado was occurring and that certainly saved many lives here in Salina. <clears throat> Now, tonight, emergency officials are still assessing the damage across the area. I'm told this uh, tornado was on the ground at least three to five miles. The damage quite red, widespread across the northwest portion of this city. Uh, emergency crews, electricity crews also on the scene here trying to restore power to residents in this area who right now are in the dark. We've also seen the American Red Cross offering assistance to neighbors because because many of them have no place to go at this hour with homes ripped white from their flames. Uh, this city, not the only one impacted by a tornado overnight. Wapakoneta also hit. Our live team coverage continues with Emma Henderson, who's on the ground there surveying the damage. Emma. That's right, Andrew. We're east of you here in Wapakoneta. Now the storms rolled through here last night and they damaged, if not destroyed, several barns. So if you take a look right now, it looks like I'm standing on just a freshly laid foundation for a new building. But actually, this was a fully covered equipment barn just last night. Since then, dozens of people have come to this farm to help out the people here. You can actually see them if we pan right over there. They've been working since 6 a.m. to get this cleaned up. They say that the debris actually scattered across 33, which which is just right behind us here and that they're going to have to start cleaning that up as well beginning tomorrow. But they also say that they're blessed because only one building here was destroyed. The front end loader, um, the forklift, everybody's been trying to move the equipment so we can get it put into all the different containers to get it moved out. We'll be here again at 6 with some more information, but I'm going to leave you with a little bit of good news. About an hour ago, the power here came back on, which means they also have water again since they rely on electric power for the wells. Reporting live in Wapakoneta, Emma Henderson, I'm going to send it back to you, Andrew. Emma, thank you so much. Back here in Salina, we are seeing a heartwarming scene. Neighbors helping neighbors clean up debris from outside of their yards. I told you a moment ago that the American Red Cross is on the ground. Some of those members are right from the Toledo area. As Amanda Fay reports, they want you to know in the Toledo metro area to be prepared as severe weather rolls through right now. On first alert days like today, when we know in advance there's a threat of severe weather, the American Red Cross says it's a good idea to pack a go kit with essentials like a flashlight, batteries, water, and non-perishable food. We don't know when a tornado is going to strike, but if we know that there's going to be some severe weather in the area, just make that kit ahead of time, put it next to your bed, and if you need it, it's right there. The Red Cross also says to pack items you know you'll personally need, like contact lens solution and medication, or diapers and formula if you have children, plus food for your pets if you have them. One item you might not think about but you'd want to have in a natural disaster, shoes with a heavy sole. You might have to walk on top of, you know, nails and, you know, debris. The Red Cross also recommends having a radio. You crank it and crank it and crank it and crank it. It charges it for all intents and purposes. Mm -hmm. It charges it. It sells this one right here. It includes a flashlight, phone charger, and solar panel as another way to charge it. And most importantly, be weather aware. Download the First Alert weather app to receive alerts when there are watches and warnings, especially those that come while you're asleep.
alert notification that they do outside, sometimes you're not going to hear. But most people sleep with their phone next to them now. And, um, and I know that mine goes off when something severe happens. The Red Cross also urges everyone to check on their elderly neighbors, especially if they're hearing impaired. For WTOL 11, I'm Amanda Fay. Back here live in Salina, cleanup efforts here may soon be hampered as dark clouds and rain starts to hover across the area. We will update you on the efforts here in another live report coming up at 6. For now, live in Salina, Andrew Kinsey, WTOL 11. Christy, back to you. Tonight, thousands of people are picking up their lives from the rubble after tornadoes hit the Buckeye State. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine has since declared a state of emergency in three counties impacted by these storms. Andrew Kinsey live in Salina right now. Andrew, what's the feeling like down there after this storm hit? Well, Christy, the feeling right now is wet. The last thing that residents here in Salina want is rain and thunder moving through the area as they try to pick up from the tornado that spun through this community overnight. We're right outside of the downtown area. Take a look around here. You're not going to see many people outside right now because many of them have uh, taken shelter because of the storm that's passing over right now. One person killed, seven injured overnight in that tornado that spun through this area around 10 o'clock. All day long, we We've seen neighbors helping neighbors clean up debris that scattered throughout the area. Emergency officials telling us this tornado may have been on the ground some three to five miles. Now, emergency officials saying those emergency alert sirens really played a key role. We continue our live team coverage tonight with John Namug, who is alive. And John, uh, these residents have several factors to thank for saving lives here. That's right, Andrew. We've been down here all day, and it's just amazing when you see this first person how tornadoes impact communities. If you look behind me, some of these homes are nearly totaled, while just up the street, those homes a block away hardly lost a shingle. Here in Salina, the National Weather Service has said this tornado was at least a category EF3. It traveled about three and a half miles on the ground from just west of Salina through these neighborhoods on the northwest corner of town. Pretty much right after the storm subsided, the north central chapter of the Red Cross set up a shelter in neighboring cold water. And while homeowners are getting help from neighbors and friends, cleanup uh, Red Cross volunteers from the region are working with local EMA departments to assess the damage so they know how uh, much relief supplies to send. And the neighboring EMA director from Van Wert County assisted in assessing the damage and he told us that because these communities know they are susceptible to tornadoes, everyone here is prepared and knows to take tornado warnings seriously. Let's aim this way. You need to be able to react at a moment's notice to get you and your family to a safe place and make sure that you can uh, ride out the storm. If it's not in your home, then you know where you can go where there's a safe place, that you've got a family emergency kit ready. So if you do need to evacuate, be out of your home for a few days. This is an active year. It's a dangerous year. People across our area need to be very well prepared. And uh, Governor DeWine visited, and he did issue an emergency for these three counties. And as you can see in these live pictures, Andrew, we're getting torrential downpour. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, too, so these folks aren't going to get any relief anytime soon. Yeah, not really helping efforts here. Emergency crews remaining on the scene tonight trying to restore power. As Robert predicted, we are now getting hammered by gusty winds and rains. Staying on top of breaking news, one person is dead, dozens more hurt in Salina, Ohio, after several tornadoes rummaged through the southwestern part of the state overnight. In the state, thousands remain without power tonight, and people are being urged to stay inside and avoid downed power lines. Team coverage tonight from Salina, where the cleanup is just the beginning in the wake of those several tornadoes striking the area. Leading our coverage, my co-anchor Andrew Kinsey has been on the ground since this afternoon where residents are trying to figure out what's next. It has now been more than 24 hours since a deadly tornado ripped through Mercer County, leaving behind a trail of destruction here in the small city of Salina, prompting a state of emergency. As the darkness of night settles in, residents here remain on edge after a possible EF3 tornado Monday night. The fierce winds severely damaging 40 homes, snapping trees in half, tossing cars, even leaving one person dead. And it's not just here, it's, it's out of town. Yeah, really sad. And these people, you know, where do they go? Several subdivisions are now littered with debris with residents sitting in the dark. We basically got set up to go in and then all of a sudden it just 
started everything started crashing the winds were picking up the air, you could tell the air was really moving and so forth emergency officials believe the tornado which touched down around 10 p.m stayed on the ground for about three to five miles governor mike dewine toured the ravaged area tuesday surveying the damage and offering to free up state resources to help speed up recovery efforts at least i wanted to just express my my sympathy also wanted to take a look mm -hmm. uh the way that it, it works is the local officials will do the the initial assessment mm -hmm. uh they'll figure out exactly what they have then we we will be able to go to the federal government for the emergency declaration this is not the first tornado to strike the small city back in november of 2007 17, an EF2 tornado hit the city. A second EF2 tornado hit hours later in St. Anthony in the western part of Mercer County. This time, emergency officials say early alerts saved lives. This is an active year. It's a dangerous year. People across our area need to be very well prepared. The steady rain here really hampering cleanup efforts here, which I'm told could take months to complete. At last check, more than 30,000 electric customers are still in the dark. Weather permitting crews plan to be out throughout the night working to restore power to the area. For now, we are in Salina. Andrew Kinsey, WTOL 11.